You're listening to the Decentered Media Podcast with me, Rob Watson. Conversations about community media. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media. Hello, it's Rob Watson here for Decentered Media and it is Friday the 8th of March uh, 2024 Um, and uh, I thought I'd uh, kind of do uh, an end of week summary of some of the stuff I've been doing this week and some of the stuff I've uh, posted online. As ever you can find out more information about the stuff I do related to community media at decentered.co.uk so the first thing I've done, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram, D- at Decentered Media as well, and I think I'm on Blue Sky, and I'm on Mastodon, and I'm on Threads, and I'm on Instagram, all at Decentered Media. It's like kind of, uh, uh, there probably is, but I just wish I had one thing that sent out to everything um, so I, I, that I didn't have to pay for. That would be useful. Uh, everything costs these days. Uh, yeah, so it's been a busy week. I've been kind of uh, plugging away, doing uh, working on a number of projects, um, and, and one of the most important things I've done this week is I've transitioned my website away from my own uh, host and I was using DigitalOcean and it for hosting a WordPress package and because I'm not a, a web developer, uh, it was using up more and more uh, server space. It was like caching loads and I couldn't figure out how it was doing that because it was about 28 gigabytes worth of content on the when I backed it up it was about 28 gigabytes but it was using like 160 gigabytes it's like clearly uh, my, my uh, lack of knowledge about how to host a WordPress site and it was just getting very expensive so I decided to transition it over to wordpress.com uh, and that works out about 280 pounds a year which is uh, which 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 is good I think it's good value actually because I now no longer need to worry about backups I need, need to worry about the security as much um, the site seems to be running faster and it uh, the backup worked reasonably uh, easily it took a couple of attempts just to get it but it kind of sucked up all the content from the site and put it on, uh, on on the new site so and then I just had to point the servers in the right direction the DR, the, the DNS settings in the right place uh, so hopefully you've kind of seen a bit of an improvement in the um, accessibility for the decentered media site uh, and hopefully nobody really noticed any kind of interruption in service uh, the other thing I've been doing is working on a project which kind of <laughs> kind of you know when you're you, you, your enthusiasm runs away with you and you kind of really should be doing other things as well and there's another, another couple of projects that I work on which I should have been a, and I get paid for which I should have been attending to but <clears throat> this kind of we needed to move very quickly which is to set help set up uh, Saw Sound which is a new radio station new community radio station or local radio station for Leicester uh, which is uh, available on DAB and online at sourcesound.uk. Uh, and we're, we're going to explore other platforms and, and approaches in the future. Uh, but the idea was it kind of was forking off uh, from uh, Leicester Community Radio and we, we established Leicester Community Radio 2 as an access-driven station. But uh, it, it, it got to the point where we felt it was best to fork it off into its own separate project with its own separate identity. So I've been working on that with colleagues uh, uh, Sam at uh, uh, at uh, Leicester um, uh, 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 has been helping with that, and we kind of written a load of policies this week. So I've been furiously uh, creating uh, po- basic policies. They need a lot of revision and a lot of examination for health and safety, for data protection, uh, for pre- presenters' agreements, all those kind of things, and using ChatGPT uh, and and AI. Uh, to simplify the process of um, uh, developing the content of these policies and so hopefully that they've worked out okay but there's about 30 of them uh, these documents uh, which we're going to be submitting for a director's meeting uh, tomorrow on Saturday uh, so hopefully we can hit the ground running and have a a viable radio and it's it's literally taken two weeks (coughs) you know Sam with the technical you know knowledge that he's got in terms of using the server side uh hosting side and the broadcast transmission side all of that kind of stuff as as you know and understanding how the playlists work and what's the best way to to generate 
uh, um, content and also to keep listeners, you know, actively listening for longer periods of time. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's been a fascinating experience and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to working with a, a group of experienced volunteers. I'd describe this in a way as you're not starting from scratch. There must be between us, between the, the kind of the people behind it and the people who are volunteering it for this there's probably you know two or three hundred years worth of experience in the room um and it's kind of nice to draw a line and say okay yeah one of the objects is to provide training and to introduce people to who've got no experience of community radio or community media to ensure introduce those people into the process of uh developing content you know getting their own programs and shows and writing blogs for the website and all or being involved in the social media helping out behind the scenes with the administration all that kind of stuff but it's kind of nice to start a project to go okay we're drawing a line everybody's on this side of the line at this point has to know what they're talking about and they have to act very quickly to get uh, to get things moving along uh, so it's been a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a kind of a, an opportunity to just push things into place I, I suppose it's a bit like you know kind of you you've learned to drive a car you know or a bus you know and, and it's like you, you you've got your license you've got plenty of experience and somebody comes along and says do you know what you know can you can you set a bus up for us and uh, and you go yeah okay this is what exactly what you need to do and you don't take any argument about it you don't it's not a long negotiation and I, th- I, b- I believe there's a kind of um, you know to some extent there's some consternation within the radio uh, uh, colleagues within the radio industry that you know how did you manage to set something up so quickly well the technology is re- you know if you know what you're talking about if you know what you're doing if you've got an engineering mindset and you can you can work with servers and you can do things uh, you know methodically and sensibly you don't need to put things out for endless pontification uh, before you start something you can actually have something up and running very very quickly plus we take the view as well that you know it's it's iterative it's going to start and it's going to get better and what we mean by better is that it's going to be more agreeable and engaging for the people who are listening in Leicester and Leicestershire, uh, rather than it being perceived as professional by people within, you know, the, the kind of classic national broadcast industry who, you know, uh, for the best will in the world, are more concerned about what other radio professionals might think of what they do rather than, you know, the, the, the people sitting on the bus or the people driving past uh, doing deliveries, that kind of stuff. So we're, we're, we're having a bit of fun with it. We've got a great little logo. If you if you visit the website or find us on social media, I think it's Saw Sound UK on Twitter and Facebook and things like that. Uh, there's going to be more social media coming along, uh, and we've got this image <coughs> of a of a fox. We've got a friend who's a graphic designer came up with the idea. You know the the river Saw. The reason why it's called Saw is because right the way through the heart of Leicester, through literally through the divide the city, uh, is the river Saw. Uh, and it and it kind of you know goes from one end of the best all to Blaby and, and back back again and it runs through the middle of the city. A part of it were can- canalised uh, during the you know for the industrial revolution. So it used to be a really important uh, industrial uh, uh, tributary and and it was you know kind of highly used. Uh, the Great Central Way used to run along the River Saw, and then it runs out into Leicestershire, either side of the city. So it's kind of got this this place, and we kind of wanted one of the suggestions and one of the early examples of the the image that we, we people were looking at was like a, a an urban skyline, and I just found it totally depressing. I thought, no, I, I want to escape from the city. <laughs> I want to escape from the urban environment. And the other image that everybody in Leicester is is familiar with, or or you know, if you've been around Leicester for long enough. Is is the fox uh, so we combined a picture of a river and a fox and put it through some ai generation and did, did some tweaking to it and changed the colors and things like that and actually i really like it it's one of those images that you look at it and you go actually you know what that that's that, that cheers you up a little bit so you know rather than it it, it it's it's designed to just kind of bring a spot is it perfect is it wonderful is it the best logo ever no clearly not 
but it's fun and it's nice bright colours and you know things are gloomy enough uh, you know <laughs> certainly the weather here has been gloomy enough uh, for the last few months uh, as we come out of winter and you're starting to see spring come come into you know the, the daffodils and the crocuses and the the blossom is starting to uh, uh, to, to make it make its way into the parks and the uh, and the landscape and you know it's just pleasant to uh, 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 to have something which is positive so I've enjoyed it and I've also enjoyed the kind of music mix I mean it's a, a, a number of shows on there Michael doing the breakfast show uh, a bit of automation during the daytime in the evening time but it's kind of growing and people are making you know kind of stepping up to to start doing programs and it's going to be highly interactive so it's just really nice to have a a good positive experience working on a project uh, like this very quickly without really having to think about it too much as well and what i've said all the way through this my contribution if you like is trust your instincts you know don't think about this stuff too much because you've been doing it for you know a lot of us have been doing it for years and we just need to get on with it and this is where we kind of have a little bit of fun and stop you know, worrying what other people think but and other people seem to like it so that's quite nice Anyway, the other project that I've uh, I've worked on is a bit of writing on the website as usual. So this is uh, kind of an opportunity to do a summary of uh, of some of the content that I've posted. Uh, a number of blogs uh, this week. If I can just get the website, I was saying I've just improved the website, but it just seems to. There we go. We slowed down a bit. So I've written one. I've written a couple this week, and and I uh, so certainly since the last podcast, I've written a few. Uh, and a couple of areas that w- which you might find useful or interesting uh, to look at, uh, which is the idea of participative media literacies and how important it is to have a the participation element of community media, which is about people getting involved, having access. And it's often the case. I was uh, I was uh, doing some work with a colleague at De Montfort University, and she yeah, she brilliant, uh, re- really good teacher and really good researcher and academic, uh, and and but comes from a press and PR background, which is which is for me is the contrast so she advocates for 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 effective and good press and PR and I I kind of say well no I actually reject that and and I advocate for community media but I think she came up with a Nikki came up with a really great distinction which is often press and PR can be about looking good whereas I'm more interested in doing good uh, and that distinction between the two, you can get wrapped up in your image and how you project things and your brand identity and those kind of things, rather than actually asking the question, are we actually doing any good here? And how do we know that we're doing any good? Uh, so I wanted to write that, you know, the important thing is is bringing people along in the process of learning how to create and share and produce their own media, which represents their own experiences and their own concerns rather than it being imposed on them through a kind of market research or a hierarchical top-down kind of approach. And then this tied in with um, uh, 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 some thoughts I've put together about uh, if you've heard of the concept of building, which is a kind of Scandinavian German concept which comes out of kind of social practice, which has been used and, and implemented in uh, uh, for many years. And it kind of informed the development of things like the Finnish education system and economic development process in the 1930s at that point you know you go back in time and Finland was the you know it was it was an incredibly poor country that had no you know, the natural assets that it had uh, didn't put it in a position where it could easily make uh, a lot of you know kind of you know growth and capital and things like that so what they decided was they had to invest in education and it's a multi-generational project of investing in the capability and capacity of the citizens of a country to solve problems and to deal with challenges in order to be able to kind of reconcile the things that uh, need to be dealt with within those societies and communities so it's it, it tends not to look for short-termism it tends to look for uh, solutions which are uh, you know uh, non uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Then they're, they're non-judgmental. So it's it's really about looking at what practically works within society. So when you're dealing with things like crime, or you're dealing with uh, uh, you know kind of a teenage uh, 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 a pregnancy, it's it's all very well having a moralistic attitude, but does that actually work? And I'm not saying that you know you shouldn't have a moralistic attitude. I'm just saying the extent to which that moralistic attitude actually gets in the way of a practical solution. Things like homelessness, things 
things like uh, drug addiction, all the social challenges and issues that, you know, the build on concept says actually citizens need to be empowered and informed, and well educated, and there needs to be a strong social net, so, social underpinning to this. So there's a, a, a safety net and that people aren't allowed to fall through. And that brings me to the next blog that I wrote about, which is the breakdown of the British UK social fabric. Uh, I had a couple of days in Germany last week and okay the part of Germany I, I might have been in might not have been representative of the rest of the, the, the country uh, but you know uh, you know we've normalized in the UK stepping over people who are begging outside supermarkets I'm going to be blunt if you're if you're offended by my bluntness this is my lived experience and get used to it really because I'm fed up with it and we desperately need a change of government to get this kind of the, the, the kind of normalization and tolerance of this um, kind of abandonment of people we, we, we really do need to just get you know kind of a change of attitude and very quickly put some social policies and some money in place that deals with these problems but you know you could walk into a supermarket and there was no security guards. I'm fed up of walking into supermarkets and shops in the UK where there's a security guard constantly monitoring what you're doing. The, the, I've just been to a local Lidl. Uh, filthy. You know, it really is just, it's just dirty. It's scattered with boxes. It's cramped. There's not enough staff. Everybody seems very stressed. One person running around on the tail. You know, we squeeze in this country. We don't invest. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not, it's not comparatively compared to some of the, the, supermarkets I went to in in, in, over in Germany, it was near Frankfurt. They, they, it was really nice. It was pleasant. The floors were clean. There were no pallets being unloaded in the middle of the supermarket aisles in the middle of the day. They leave that until the evening. There was a bit of restocking going on. The staff were friendly. There was no music blaring away. This is one of the things you know. Walked around some town centres and and went to some cafes and 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 no loud music. Twice I've had. Uh, com met up with colleagues and friends this week and you can barely hear yourself speak because the music's so loud and I think there's a kind of a, a breakdown of civility and it's the social fabric fraying and it's kind of every the common response and, and if this does feel and I do sound like I'm standing on a soapbox I am because I'm a you know we, we really need to to tackle some of these problems and there's a sense of urgency that we need to deal with them and we do need some plain speaking about this now and um but the but the just the you know the kind of whole notion that you can you know the the it's almost it feels a lot like we've gone backwards in many places and and people you know what really always annoys me is people say, oh, it's the same everywhere. You know, wherever you go, it's like that. It's not. It's the UK. <laughs> you know, it's like we've allowed this to happen and we shouldn't be allowing this to happen. And and people in smaller towns, you know, the kind of the county towns are starting to see this now. And they start, it's start, you know, and the, the, the shops are closing down and the, you know, it's charity shops, the high streets full of charity shops and all those kind of things, which are markers of a kind of social decline. And we need to, you know, we need to tackle this. And what role does our media play in this? Because nine times out of ten, either you listen to the radio or watch the TV and you're totally depressed about this, or it's like it's a game, it's a kind of, you know, it's a distraction. You know, it's like that's the job of our media is to distract you from how depressing it is outside in it, outside your house, how depressing your job is, how, how worried you are about paying your bills, paying your mortgage, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, you know, you get that hour or so watching some TV and it's like a, a bit of a relief that you're not, you know, you, you're not so anxious. Um, and it, it, it really does feel, but one of the things we don't do with our... Uh, media really and this is I think where we are missing something which is having a a really strong public purpose in terms of finding solutions for some of these problems and that a lot of the time our media treats this as a kind of a game as a as a whinge because the people who run our media, uh, and this has been well documented, tend to come from one particular social class these days. Working class people, for example, don't get a chance to get a career in media anymore. Uh, they've been centralised. You know, the, the jobs are in, uh, you know, in, in the southeast, and you know, it, it isn't as if there's a kind of route through our newspapers, on on news media these days. The BBC is closing down. Uh, you know, they've reduced in England. Uh, and we've talked about this extensively before, they're closing down 
the um, you know the kind of local radio, uh, which means that pe- less and less fewer and f- sorry not less and less fewer and fewer people get the opportunity to engage and learn how to create stories, how to produce audio, how to run programs, and it all becomes centralised. So you know if I want to talk about the problems of uh, uh, social destitution and vagrancy and all of those you know really you know awful things that we should all be you're massively concerned about on the streets of Leicester forget about it if it's after two o'clock in the afternoon because they're not interested because people in Derby and people in Coventry and people in Nottingham don't want to know um, they want to know what's happening in their in their towns and it's like they've broken the BBC have broken that bond with people and I, I, I really I honestly don't see how the BBC uh, uh, can hold its head up with any kind of sense of pride about what it does if it's prepared to do that at a time when globalized media is 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 foisting misinformation and corruption and we've got things you know are we going to deal with tiktok and challenge tiktok and get that out of our system and really focus on our vibrant inclusive creative responsible accountable form of local media that we produce ourselves in our own towns and not be you know waiting for netflix to turn up and give us some kind of uh you know uh, 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 an internationalized game show type approach um so it's you know the, 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 these these things make a difference um so yeah so the the concept of our um you know uh, our, our community media so the, the way that we are I'm advocating that we really do need to kind of put some effort into recognising this and working collaboratively with partners in different parts of the civic and social sector, those people who are dealing with these challenges, is to is to look at the assets that we have in our community. So I've written a blog about the asset-based approach to uh, community development. It's called ABCD. And it's just really the idea that we can um, uh, uh, take the skills, the strength, the capacity that we have we don't look at it from a deficit point of view we shouldn't look at our communities and say this this is these can't be helped this is just a problem a set of problems that can't be you know it can't be dealt with there's not enough skills we need to bring them in from the outside i was talking to somebody the other day and they told me that a uh, they 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 were in a, a a local community hall and it was run by a local authority and and it was being painted. It was in Leicester and it was being painted. And they asked the person who was doing the painting where they'd come from and they'd come from Dover. Uh, that's how the contracting out system works is that you bring somebody in. It's cheaper uh, or supposedly, I, you know, I'm not really sure how it's cheaper, but somebody travels in from the south of England to the Midlands in the UK to paint a door. Um, and, and, you know, in, in terms of our media, we're doing... We're just doing bonkers things like that. You know, it's like people are reporting about us and we're not reporting or having conversations for ourselves, about ourselves, about the things that concern us. So we really need a strong local media identity, but that needs to be facilitated by government. I think we're past the point where a few well-meaning people like myself and all those other people who are you know, running community radio stations and trying to set up independent community newspapers, uh, we're just going to fail because the government has gone missing in this regard and so the, the 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 most recent blog that i've written today is calling for civic society groups to form an alliance really of looking at the, 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 all those organizations that have a public purpose that are committed to changing health inequalities to changing educational achievement levels you know to 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 improving responses for you know victims of crime you know whether it's a public authority whether it's a charity whether it's a civic society group whether it's a community group an informal community group there should be a strong connection between these groups that have a very strong public purpose social purpose grounded in trying to make lives better and community media and that we should look at this and we should be being invested in but i mean honestly dcms um is a mess at the moment the 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 way that the media bill has been pushed through which is basically a grab by the in in terms of radio uh it's a grab by the uh, corporate radio stations the international corporate radio stations uh to consolidate and i've I've called it protectionism you cannot you know get no new people will be able to get into the market and ofcom does
doesn't seem to want to open up the market to allow new people to come in and use whatever capacity there is there. Uh, Ofcom have got a million excuses to kind of say, no, people can't do this. Well, we need action now. We need people to be able to set up and challenge the infrastructure that's there, the status quo, and, and take on some of these problems in an accountable and responsible way. Don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating for a, a kind of GB news free for all. I am a 100% um, uh, behind the broadcast code. I think it keeps our media honest in this country, but we need more people able to innovate, to do different things, to get on air, to broadcast, to not be controlled by the tech giants in, you know, if you set up a radio station and you, you, somebody needs to, and it's on FM or AM, all somebody needs to do is use an old radio and tune up and down the dial. They don't need to go via a search engine that's controlled by Google or Microsoft or Apple or some other corporation that we don't know of in a bunker in you know, California or somewhere. We've got that control over it. Locally, we've got that control over it. So it matters an awful lot. So I'm really kind of concerned that we don't have a strong kind of input into uh, the debate and the discussion and that our uh, DCMS, Department for Culture, Media and Sports, and I think the Secretary of State now is Liz Fraser, uh, are actually given us, and ha they haven't given us any leadership for years, for over a decade. Uh, we've had Social Value Act come in, we've had the uh, localism bills come in we've seen leveling up come and go uh you know we, we've got devolution being talked about all of these things and yet our media is more and more centralized and less and less locally focused uh and so it's kind of that time where we we kind of really need to think what I, I don't think it's controversial to say, uh, but there will be a change of government and that we um, we need to be looking at not just what the next government does, but how it does it. And it's, it, it's transparency, it's accountability, it's openness, it's the ability to bring together an alliance of civic society organisations, public authorities that say yes, we, I mean, COVID proved this. You know, there's a massive need. You know, the COVID lockdowns had a massive need for public communication. We threw billions at using the same old tired techniques, and they work very effective. You know, the uh, the eat out to uh, uh, spread the virus campaign that Rishi Sunak organised when he was at the Treasury used a lot of radio advertising and it worked. Lots of people went out and subsequently it's been found spread the virus uh, again and we had to go back into another lockdown. Um, so the power of marketing and advertising works, but where are we shoving the money? Are we shoving the money into those things? It's like, you know, when you walk into the supermarket and you're walking down the processed food aisle and the report that came out last week about the UK being, you know, high on the rank of processed food, second in, you know, if not the, the top in Europe for people who eat processed food, ultra processed food. And we've got the highest rate of diabetes, the highest rate of uh, obesity, the highest rates of hypertension and heart disease. And, and we keep doing the same things and, and we're not stopping and we're not saying we need to do something different. Well, the starting point is saying, who controls our media and we need our civic society organizations our public authorities who are who, who are the ones who have to pick up the pieces to be able to say we need to counterbalance i'm not saying that they take over i think it's you know i'm a pluralist mm -hmm. so you need to counterbalance the one you know the, the 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 convenience industrial mass media with socially responsible social purpose media and somewhere in the middle the bbc has kind of gone missing in action about this you know it's kind of executives who are more concerned about getting their next job with you know netflix or uh, you know amazon or whoever else uh, aren't really concerned about what local people need living in you know towns and cities around the UK um, so anyway a bit of a rant but that's kind of it's all up on the website and it's there to read and there's some resources that you can you can you can look at which I hope you find useful um, and yeah they, you know probably a bit of editing would be useful but you know I'll edit later when I put them together as a book if you want to get in contact with me and take part in these conversations and if you want to come back at me with ideas and with uh, you know points that you think you know I've just 
brushed over. I'm not here just to kind of be an echo chamber. Well, I am a little bit, you know, so we all, we all, we all want to do that to some extent. But I like engaging in the conversation. So come and join me on Twitter. Uh, join me on Blue Sky, Threads, uh, Mastodon, and on the website. Uh, I'm also on YouTube and stuff like that. Just go to decentered.co.uk and I'll try and put all of the links to all of the different social media on there as well. Um, and, uh, you know, follow the podcast. And... If you're interested, if you want to be part of the conversation, we do a weekly drop in on a, it's at the at the moment it's on a Wednesday evening, uh, where we just have a chat about these things. And but you have to join Patreon and yeah, give us three pounds a month, something like that. So it pays for me to have a coffee every now and again, uh, and and to let some steam out and to de 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 pressure. Uh, so anyway, right, okay, thanks very much, and I'll speak to you soon. You've been listening to the Decentered Media Podcast with me, Rob Watson. To find out more, go to decentered.co.uk or follow on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media. 